Storygram Network. Hey, Gerardo. How are you? Pretty good. Hey, you know about the subscription? How does it work? That's a good question. So subscription to the Sonoma Community Center podcast means really no commitment on your side. What came up, I was thinking about this a long time ago, is people typically tend to think that a subscription means that you have to pay for something or we're capturing an email or information like that. But that's simply not the case. So you mean I can just click it and just watch your videos and I don't have to pay any money? You don't have to pay any money. Subscribing merely means that when the next time we have an episode, it will pop up wherever you're listening to episodes, be it Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. And what that means is it really just supports us and lets us know that we have listeners out there besides just downloading the podcast. So it's just not subscribing. It's also liking it, right? Liking it, but really that subscribe button means that we know that there's listeners out there. Perfect. I don't know if you've had this, but I have people that come up to me and say, hey, I listen to it. I do. I do. But translating that into the subscribe button means that you're supporting the Community Center podcast, the artists, and everybody that comes through here and shares their story that we are always excited to share about. Well, you guys are listening. Subscribe, please. Yep. Make our life easier (laughs) and we want to become popular. (laughs) Famous. All right. (laughs) Subscribe away. Hello, we are the Sonoma Community Center podcast, a place of creativity, connection, and community. We highlight the artists, teachers, and the community that come through the doors of our historic brick building, often called the heart of Sonoma. We share local tips and shout outs to our home, Sonoma Valley. And we are your hosts, Molly Spencer. Gerardo Diaz. We are the engagement team of the Sonoma Community Center. Hello, welcome back <laughs> to the Sonoma Community Center podcast. This is Gerardo Diaz. This is Molly Spencer. Hey, Molly, what's up? Jumping the gun yeah. on our entrances, <laughs> right? I think we got to work that out. <sighs> How you been, Molly? It's good. We are actually recording, and it's just starting to kind of heat up for summer to let people know. But by the time this comes out, it will probably be nice and hot. Oh, yeah. The kids might be back in school. It's time for me to bust out my Speedo. Oh, (laughs) maybe not. (laughs) So, folks, we have an awesome guest here today, Jim Ledwith. Otherwise known, a.k.a. UFO Jim. Jim, welcome. Thank you for having me. Of course. So I'm going to say a little bit, but then I think you've got a lot to cover because you have an amazing story. You basically, a human being from another dimension, pretty much, you are a longtime lecturer, speaker, and supporter of the Community Center because you started really bringing your UFO lecture series. What year was that? I couldn't really... about. 12 years ago. 12 years ago. And it's usually a couple times a year. Usually Yeah, October. I used to do multi. Yeah. I now just do one. We always make it rocking. It's so rocking. I have people that will call all year long, waiting, when's UFO Jim coming back? What's the next topic? And, you know, another side back to bringing it back to the community center, because we truly are a diverse group here that loves everybody, including the Even aliens. aliens. Right. Even <laughs> yeah. aliens, okay? All of it. Church here on Sundays, aliens in October. Yeah, got all it. the time. And you know what? Well, this is a beautiful thing because I do believe that you donate anything that the lecture Everything. Everything, everything. goes back to the Sonoma Community 100%. Center. hundred percent. I wow. know. You're the best. What a guy. Didn't you donate the TV too that is I did. right outside in the hallway? Or no, is it the one that's in, in room 110? Room 110. Right. So yeah. So next time you book your exciting lectures, parties, or anything here, and you see that TV, and you want to put something on it, thank Jim. Thank you. You're welcome. So welcome, Jim. (laughs) Thank you. Okay, before we launch in, we have so many questions, right? So many questions. First, immediately, tell them what's happening coming up here in October. Well, in October, October 25th, at Andrews Hall, 
7 p.m. Oh, you're in the big stage. Yeah, the because we want to fill it up. He gets Excellent. Get that money to the community center. Uh, thank you. you. Yes, we do. So October 25th. 7 p.m., mm-hmm. 7 to 9. Okay. And uh, this year, we're going to really rock. <laughs> going to really rock. What's the theme? What is the topic this year? The topic and the name of the lecture is, Are They Walking Among, Among Us? us. Okay. Hey, Jim, do you feel when you do those type of events that there's probably aliens listening to you or watching this or pay money to see you? I have had hybrid children, though they may not know they are. Oh, and yeah. the parent will bring them to the event. And they usually get there early, so I get a chance to interview them. Yes. And I don't say anything. I don't tell them about them. I just ask him some questions. Why do you want to be here? Huh. A lot of times they wouldn't answer. Sometimes they'll say, I don't know, but I wanted to be here. Do you think that they know? They don't know. They don't know that they they're walking among us. No, that they're part of the walking among us. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, <laughs> we don't more. want to give away too much of what your uh, lecture is okay. going to be. I think, right, everybody's got to come. So, Jim, what was that question just now? Why do you want to be here? (laughs) Why do I want to be at the community center? (laughs) I want to share the information because if it wasn't for the Sonoma Film Festival, a mainstream film festival who's had UFOs and the film, it's the genre, in the film festival for going on 13 years. And thanks to Kevin McNeely. Yeah, exactly. So we got it in and... I realized that this is a film you were behind or a friend that had a film. All. All of it. Okay. But initially I was just bringing in researchers, filmmakers, films on the subject matter. Okay. I realized the way to communicate with the masses, I mean, is not these classes. We're not talking about masses. That is film media. Why is everybody now going, Oh, there are UFOs. Like, duh. (laughs) So, but it's media. It's all media. So I realized that. So I ended up going into the executive producer level and working on films. And we did the film, The Phenomenon, which has made lots of money. (laughs) Oh, yeah? Yeah. Has had five, 10 million views. Where can you find The Phenomenon? Everywhere. Everywhere. Every platform, the phenomenon. You got to put in the word the. Because if you right. don't, you get John Travolta. <laughs> that's really? what I was what? thinking. That's what I was thinking. Right. That See? movie. Yes. Yes. No. Yeah. I didn't you know. You seen it? No. It's good. No. It is, it is good. It's good. Okay. I like it. The phenomenon. the phenomenon. So we did the film. We had Peter Coyote narrate. Oh, he's you the ought best to see narrator. The film. It is good for everybody. It's okay. not. Like what the subject matter is going to be on October 25th. <laughs> gotcha. That's deep dive. <laughs> a deep dive. Yeah. I love a good deep dive. I want to deep dive into your story because it says on your Facebook page, you were born in Roswell, New Mexico. Well, not really. <laughs> What's the I've human been... story? Uh, where were you humanly born? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. No way. Brooklyn. Way. Yes. Wait, you grew up there? Four or five years. Okay. But I was first abducted there. When you were young? When you were young. Yes. I'm an abductee. How old were you at your first abduction? Two or three. Two or three. Yes. Tell us about the experience. Tell us what happened. Well, of course, I didn't know that was the experience. All okay. I know is in the middle of the night, I would hear we had linoleum floors, and I would hear shuffling. Shh. On the floors, somebody walking but shuffling. And in the morning, I'd say, Ma, what was that? And she said, Oh, Jimmy, you were dreaming. So yeah. that was kind of the first couple of experiences. Probably you're young. So when you're that young, you're not necessarily thinking, Oh, that was a dream because you don't know what a dream was. But what was right. this alien experience? Not sure. Or when did you get abducted that you're like, This is something different happened? You know what? It was only 12, 13 years ago, right here in Sonoma. I had a face to face. Really? Wow! 
<laughs> no way. Yeah, and we're going to be talking about that in the class. And you'll get to see one of the individuals that abducted me. You'll not see that exact one, but one of their species. What do aliens look like? Is it a stereotypical alien, big head, void eyes, skinny body? The answer is yes on that. They're more of the... Are they, and, are they and, like shapeshifters? They're, they're all different, right? I mean, Yeah, they're, they're different. The little ones, the grays, they're more of the artificial intelligence. They're more the workers, the worker bees. But the ones that are like in control, that work with me, they're the mantis. I'm talking praying mantis. So that's where that kind of shape and look comes from? Oh my God, yes. It scared the living whatever out of me. <laughs> and it wasn't Al? <laughs> uh, no. You have a no, great... Well, they don't know about Al. Uh, yeah, exactly. But anyway, no, it wasn't Al. This was tall. It wasn't green. It was kind of grayish. And I looked at it. I just freaked out. And I turned to run. And that's the last thing I remember. Was there any verbal communication? No, it's all done telepathically. Telepathically? Yes. Uh, was there a memory from the experience in a different place? Like it wasn't here or? It was on Castle Road in Sonoma. <laughs> no way. Way. Castle Road. Right. Anybody else have this experience? Well, not in my house. And not in your house. Well, what yeah. happens is, in my case, my wife, they, Kathy, what they right? do is, correct. Mm -hmm. They What they do is they put them out. They turn okay. them off. So they don't go, ah, where are you going? Ah. So they don't know. They're asleep. Oh. So then they couple, don't even really know. They don't know at all. Okay. And normally I wouldn't know at all. Uh-huh. But it's all done. They, communication is all telepathic. How advanced, I'm assuming that the aliens are advanced in their minds and their brains. If you can speak and they, communicate telepathically. They got here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You think they've always been around? Have they evolved as well? Don't know, but they've been around for a long time. Yes. So did you live down in Roswell or visit Roswell? I have been to Roswell, yes. By the way, great alien museum. I heard. Yeah, it's great. Hey, Jim, so do you believe that all the technology that we're getting from like the 2000s is heavily by the aliens? Probably. It's a lot of it's, as you're inferring to, back engineered. That's one of the reasons for the secrecy. Yeah, it just beats me. Like from like the 2000s, the phones that we had, you know, now we're like cell phones and stuff like that. It just, well, it, it might have come from A1 somewhere, thing. you know? Yeah. No, what do you think of that? Well, the, that's what they use more sophisticated. Well, do you think that like A1 people are now using it to transcribe and answer emails and that kind of stuff? Do you think it's just maybe getting more transparent? Do you think there's artificial intelligence or is that a totally different thing? Is that a human created artificial intelligence robotic thing as opposed to an alien experience? Do you know what I'm um, saying? They're probably related. The aliens are much more advanced. Yeah. We're like, right. forget that, you guys. Good luck with your A1. Just transcribe <laughs> your email. It right. sounds smart. We're above and beyond you. You're right. <laughs> so is Castle the only experience that you had? What happens during an experience? We're just all curious. Well, I mean, it's different for everybody. Most of us don't know it's happening. I think in my case, they were getting tired of having me go through walls or however they got me out. So they wanted me to come outside. And that's what happened. So I got up. I didn't know what I was doing. I just got up. I walked into our hallway. I was walking towards the front door. And then I felt somebody or something watching me from behind. That's when I turned around and I looked at it and it was like, ah, I didn't yell. I turned to run. And I don't remember. Could you run or? I started. Like? I could feel it. I okay. started, but I didn't get very far. Oh, well, they stopped me. It sounds like my dreams I had. Really? No, we used to live in South Carolina and we had an outhouse and it was quite far away. I had the dreams that the Wicked Witch of the West from uh, the Wizard of Oz. Was, right. And I wouldn't be able to run. 
Hello, pretty. Kind of slow, <laughs> hello, pretty. Yeah. <laughs> right. On our, anyway, that's an off topic. Right. But that dream experience has stuck with me. And so I kind of feel like I'm relating it to what it must have been feel like to try to run from aliens. Similar. But it felt present. Oh, it was there. And another thing, though I mentioned the praying mantis. Yeah. My experience, I got to see it. The big one, about six foot tall. The little gray, about three feet tall. But it was the mantis. But at the time, I didn't know that. I just thought, wow, that's the weirdest ugliest. And then about 10 years later, all of a sudden, people are talking about the mantis, the mantis, mantoids. Okay. Mantis. Man- saying, holy poopy. I got to see this thing 10 years ago, 13 years ago. Really? Way before it was in. Okay. I don't really know that much about that. Do people kind of relate that calling it a mantis or a mantoid because of the similar Look to a praying mantis? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Definitely looks like a praying mantis. Oh, wow. Those are evil, man. They eat you if they had, well, you know, if we had maybe, a six foot mantis, you know, they. Right. <laughs> don't want to be there. Hey, Jim, I got a question, Jim. Uh, so I watched a movie maybe two years ago and they talked about the hollow moon. It was the base. Spaceship moon. Yes. Is it true? Well, what's the movie uh, called? Something about the end of the Earth, they had to go to the like the moon, and I, apparently the moon was a base for aliens. Right, right. And they went in there, and they tried to like I don't know, do some crazy stuff, but they talked right. about Actually, it. if you look, check out Ancient Aliens, they've had a couple of programs on Spaceship Moon, the hollow moon. Really? But yeah, the moon was brought here. I mean, well, how did it get here? It was towed here. <laughs> what? From yeah. what? And like another... Dimensional Another, universe out there? Don't know. Beyond? Don't know. Okay. Somewhere. Do you think that's just alone with the moon, or do you think it's other planets in their alignment as well? Don't know. Don't know. Don't know. What? Without the moon, we wouldn't be here. Oh, yeah. You don't have seasons without the moon. Exactly. The moon's great. Valley of the moon. Right. I mean, we do live in kind of a otherworldly place sometimes, right. especially when it's a valley of the moon and it gets real... Those big moons come out in the middle right. of nowhere in October. I love those. So how long, I'm just going to sidestep here too, to your human story about what was young Jim like before UFOs? When did you get interested in UFOs? I have a picture that I'm going to share with you okay. folks at home can't see. I'm going to put my glasses on here. in 1952. Okay, we're taking a look at Jim's car okay. here. What? There's little Jim dressed in space gear in 1952. No What's your space gear here? So it's a really faded It was like uh, Flash photo. Gordon or whatever. But above our head, my father took the picture. Above our head is a UFO in July of 1952. No way. That was 70 years ago. I think we might need to put this photo on the graphic. Check that out, Takeshi. I mean, that looks like a hat you're wearing. Well, it's a space helmet. But I didn't know about aliens. Okay. I just knew about space. I mean, that could have been something flying in the back, Jim. Right. My father said it was military test aircraft. But that day, UFOs flew over Washington, D.C. and circled the White House and the Capitol. Same day. On the same day? Same day. And they came by Brooklyn? I mean, that is... Well, it wasn't by Brooklyn. It was about Long Island... Oh, you're out on Long Island? Right, I was. But the thing is, that's only like 400 miles away. For them, that's a two-minute trip. Wow. And and, and we scrambled jets to chase them. And of course, with no luck. So when you see this card, folks, you're going to see way back up in the skyline, you will see a circled UFO. Right. And matter of fact, I'm going to bring a blow-up to the class of that photograph you get to see it real good so you have no doubts this is not a photography mishap or no, anything like that no. in the dark room okay so you feel like the ufos are like the aliens are connecting with you then you're like a chosen one i don't think i was chosen i think maybe it had nothing to do with me that day but they were going to work down in dc oh yeah it's what's your thoughts on that did you do a lecture on that as well it was part of one 
the Washington merry-go-round. Actually, they did it two weekends in July that they circled the White House and I the Capitol building. I hearing about this. Outside of you. Yeah, yeah it, was out, it was on all kinds of media coverage. Jim, I got a question, though. Because every time I see pictures of UFO, they're always blurry. Why? With all the technology that we have right now, <laughs> like we can see the moon from a telescope, but we can't see a UFO clearly. Well, why? I've seen many clear UFO photographs. A lot of times the reason it's blurry is it's either made to be blurry, so you don't go, oh, look, it's a UFO, or it's the energy as their propulsion system that interferes with the camera. Okay, I've heard that too. All right, that can make sense. So it's like a protective layer of energy. Don't right. you wish you could do that sometimes? Yeah, yeah. When I walk <laughs> around here. Right. Just a blur, yeah, just a blur. Just a blur. Do you think the government knows about all this too? About aliens. I mean, come on, <laughs> let's get into this and Roswell and all of this. Who knows? OMG. <laughs> they've known about it the powers that be they've known about it for 75 90 years 90 years so we're talking like probably around the 20s and 30s 30s and 40s 40s, 30s and 40s. 40s for sure do you think it was a long when like film was developed or media you know was what kind it was? of starting yeah you tell close me. was the bomb the kids have found the matches <laughs> <laughs> The aliens. They didn't want us messing with atom bombs. That's true. And not only destroying the planet, but affecting space. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it was all about the bomb. Do you think they hide like in the ocean? Because, I mean, the, dish, right. the ocean is super deep. I mean, there's places where we can't even go. I Those mean. are USOs, underwater submerged objects. The answer is yes. It's a great place. Yeah. Long time ago, I watched this documentary on aliens, and they said that the government, there's a spaceship who crashed in an area somewhere. And the they, Bermuda Triangle? And I think there were grays, too. There were small ones. And they try to revive them. They try, but they die. As soon as they put them in the, you know, try to, like, do things with them, and they couldn't bring them to life. And one lady was, one secretary was saying that, She's old now. She says, yeah, I can talk about it now. I don't care. But she said that somebody came in with a piece of metal that she could have just crush it like this. Like and then it opened it, up. And then it opened up again. Well, that's Roswell. <laughs> that's Roswell? Yeah. Well, that was when Jesse Marcel, the intelligence officer of the 509th Bomb Squadron in Roswell, the Army Air Force, when the craft crashed and the Air Force sent the intelligence officer and someone else out to the site. They brought back debris. On the way back to the base, Jesse Marcel stopped by his home at two in the morning and woke up his family. And he showed them the crumpled up metal that you're talking about. You crumple it up, he laid it down, and it just opened up. Now that we have that technology... But obviously, at that time, we did not. And Jesse Marcel, by the way, who passed away in the 80s, on YouTube, he is out at the site. He's about 80, 85 years old. And he's saying, no, this wasn't of this earth. He was the guy. He's still standing by it. He was standing by it. Yeah, I mean, you got you nothing know? to lose when you're 85. Do you think that the government doesn't do anything like with all these people who are talking about aliens just because they think that maybe other people are going to say, oh, they're crazy. They don't believe you. That's why they don't shut you down, like, maybe? It just depends Okay. how much experience you have or involvement you have. I mean, I can imagine that maybe in other corners of if you had beliefs and beliefs in aliens or experiences would be a far different story that would get squashed. Like if you were in North Korea or, you yeah. know, if you were right. in Russia or something like that, as opposed to here in America where you're free to lecture. Because in Mexico, we believe, believe in the UFOs too. Mexico, they have a lot of sites. Oh, yeah. They... Jaime Malsan. Yeah, yeah. Jaime right? Malsan. Yeah, yeah, Jaime's yeah. great. He's the Mexican Media. alien expert. <sighs> So he right? believes it. The Mexican Air Force in 1991 photographed UFOs from aircraft 
that they had, and they put it out for public consumption. There's about 12 craft photographed by the Mexican Air Force. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, they I feel like there all the time. had really done his homework and been watching. Well, no, because I grew up uh, watching uh, Jaime Maussan. So, okay. you know, he was all over the place in Mexico and stuff. So, you know, a lot of work. So, yeah. That's amazing. I'm going to go sort of off topic, but not totally off topic. Crop circles. Oh, yes. Thoughts on that? Cool. Alien I was out there in 2010. Most of them are done in England. Yes. In Southern England. The real ones are real, and the phony ones are phony. Yeah, there's a group who they want to discourage people from believing that there's aliens doing it right. because they they go out there with like woods on their feet, so they step on the crops and uh-huh. they make it look boards like, and ropes. Boards, yes, and so they're they're like, yeah, it doesn't exist. But you no, know. I had a friend, Cyrus Cushing, and his father was a well-known crop circle specialist. I guess you would say that fully believed in that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. I always wondered. The real ones are real. Yeah. All right. In the alien world, crop circles, all this kind of stuff, what are you really drawn to? This is a good topic coming up among us. I think everybody's a little interested in that because it makes you start looking around like, hmm. You're right. Probably the most important thing to us because the technology is the technology. Do they have advanced technology? Absolutely. Do we have some of it? Absolutely. (laughs) But- The part that's kind of, to me, scary, or at least challenging, at least, is are they walking among us? Yeah. And we're going to be getting into that in depth on October 25th, 7 p.m. We're going to be talking about hybrids, U-breds. U-breds? U-breds. Oh, Oh my God. They're the ones that are more walking around us. Which ones are the aggressive ones? I don't know which one's more aggressive. Is that like human trait? Like it could be any alien. Do they differ from each other? Like, do they have personalities? Do they have gender identifications? I'm so curious. (laughs) I guess. I mean, probably. I think that's a human ability of one. Have you ever met like a woman alien? (laughs) Funny you mention that. (laughs) One of the programs of abduction is... They don't need to figure out how we work or what makes us tick. They know. They know. So what it's about is breeding. Okay. Hybridization. So you're telling me there's a lot of Jimmys out there? Uh, Well, I'm going to tell you this. Hybrids? When I was about 12, 13 years old, going through puberty, the only young ladies that turn me on (laughs) (laughs) were the skinny... Flat-chested, big blue-eyed, short blonde hair chicks. Do you think that's from goes back to when you're abducted at three years old? So yes. you're gonna. But I don't think it was three because what it's all about is for men sperm, yeah, and for women eggs. So what they wanted was sperm. But I don't think at three years old. I was potent. Well, no, and I'm sure they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna try to tap in, knowing that the human experience is different at all ages. So yes. your wants at three years old, it's entirely different than a 13 year old boy, and right. we know what those wants yeah. are. Right? So exactly. And it was really weird because I'd be in a shopping center or something like that, and I'd pass one of those young ladies, and I would just got go nuts like <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. That's hilarious. And anybody else goes, I, I kind of am getting oh like God. visions of a cartoon right now. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So I guess that's the precursor to your wife, Kathy, right? She's blonde. She, yeah. She's at the moment, she's, well, she's redhead, ah. but she's blonde and she isn't as flat chested as the young lady said. <laughs> and I uh, hope you're not listening, Kathy. <laughs> she will be. I hope Somebody's you are, sleeping Kathy. sleeping in the coat. In the Kathy's couch. great. How long have you guys been together? About 30 years. Wow. Yeah. You don't think your wife is an alien, though? She's no. She's walking I among don't. us? No? No. Does she think you're an alien? She's she fully thinks supportive I'm, of the, all of this? I'm influenced. Okay. Influenced. Yes. Oh, alien influencers. Oh, I like where we're going here. <laughs> what other sites are out there that talk about aliens? 
You know, I would just, I, what I would recommend, YouTube would be the best. YouTube. I mean, Richard Dolan, for instance, you can just Google him. He has a podcast. He has webinars. He has everything. He's really, really good investigator. He's a historian. Some of these people in your circle, having had people in the field as well kind of chime in from where they're at when you have these lectures? Yes, of course. Okay. As a matter of fact, I work quite a bit with Stephen Bassett, who is a congressional lobbyist on the disclosure really? issue. Really? Yes, he is. How long has he been lobbying for? About 30, 40 years. Wow. Because now he's excited. And I said, Stephen, when you finally have disclosure, which we probably never will have fully, you have to work on, are they walking among us? Telepathic stuff. The hybrids. The U-breds. What's the U-breds? They're basically half alien, half human, but the U-breds are put on the planet. To live here, a you These are the ones. These are, are the ones that are among us. I think uh-huh. maybe the guy who invented Tesla. Yeah, I was going to ask maybe, your maybe. perspective on Elon I, Musk. I, and, I yeah. no idea. <laughs> yeah, what's maybe. the trait you might find in an alien? What do you think about Elon Musk and the SpaceX program and taking rich folks up to outer space? It's so primitive. Okay. I mean, compared oh. to <laughs> <laughs> take that, Elon. Right. Yeah, exactly. We got our Teslas charging out here, but you got a telepathic ride to, uh, isn't that the way you would travel through another dimension? It doesn't seem like you would need a, some kind of spaceship Space. or craft. Yes. Yeah, I would recommend if anybody gets a chance to Google project Serpo, S E R P O. Okay. I Serpo. remember this. I remember okay. this. We did that a couple of years ago. That's right. Mm-hmm. Project Serpo. And matter of fact, I did that with. The gentleman who wrote a book on Project Serpo. But the point is, in 1965, we had an exchange program. If you've ever seen the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Of course. The last 25% of it, it happened. Wait, are you saying that Steven Spielberg is in on this? He had to be on it to some degree. Because how do you make a movie? Matter of fact, on the set was the co-executive producer of our film, Dr. Jacques Vallée, he was on the set when they were filming the movie. He executively produced no, he the was, phenomenon. Yes, okay, yes. Okay. He did with me. He's the world's most famous ufologist. Okay. And he was on the set in 1977 when they were filming Well, don't Close you think Encounters. he was like a consultant? Yes, or, yes. I mean, in consulting yes. role? Right. But you think there was a little bit more to that? Like he took more. him to a real experience? Yeah, he had a lot of information, and a gentleman by the name of Dr. J. Allen Hynek, okay. who worked for Project Blue Book, and then was a, a naysayer for the government, and then became a educator in believing it was real. He was on the set right along with Jacques. Jacques's alive and well. Okay. He's about 85, 84, but he's doing great. So, Jim... When you have naysayers or or people that don't necessarily believe in what you're believing in, that doesn't really deter you, right? Because you are a full-on believer and you have your community. What's your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, what made me chase not overly attractive young ladies (laughs) when I was 13 years old? I mean, something happened to me Okay, that affected me. And what I'm doing, I think, is education. They're a good species. There's a planet, Serpo, for instance. The beings there are E-bands. I think if they're the ones that have taken me, I'm on an education jihad. I mean, my job is to educate and to make the film. After we made the film and we had, you know, 8, 10 million people see it and people going, unbelievable film. I said to myself, wow. That's why I went from three lectures here at the community center, a year to one. I'd rather spend time and money with good films to get out to more people. Excellent. You got plans for another one, or well, or you just I'm really always on open. the lecture. Yeah, I'm open, but it, you know, it's got to be the right scenario. The phenomenon is an educational film from ages five to a hundred. Anybody can watch it. That's not a real big believer. 
and they'll come away going, whoa, maybe it's true. Pareto, you didn't see this one, did you? No, but I'm going to okay. watch it. We're gonna, I'm going to watch it now, too. Yeah. We're going to plant it? A- everywhere. A- anywhere. everywhere. So, YouTube, YouTube, right? Uh, yeah, check everywhere. So you're on YouTube already the listening to phenomenon. our podcast or Spotify or whatever. Jump on over to The Phenomenon. The oh, Phenomenon. Yeah. The Phenomenon. Don't forget I think the, now. The, I think it's now free. It was oh, okay. like originally 10, then 6, then 4. The filmmaker has basically retired. Okay. But it, he'll still make a movie. Hi, Wait. James. <laughs> That's hilarious. Hi, James. I'm hoping you're listening. Question. When you were younger, too, to kind of jump back, what was your daytime job? And was it all these aliens? Was that the passion from like 13 years old? Was it through high school, your 20s and that kind of stuff? And, and what did you do for work? It's a good question. And it's true. I started off getting to be 18 years old, immediately joined the Air Force. Oh, any experience <laughs> up there? No, but... There was things when I left McGuire Air Force Base in 1966, about 10 years later, there was an alien killed. It was right next to Fort Dix, which is Army. Okay. And McGuire Air Force Base is Air Force. Supposedly a craft landed on Fort Dix. An MP shot an alien. Alien came over to McGuire, I guess, thinking that there is craft would land and maybe pick him or her up. So I don't know why I was gone, but I was there. And then following the Air Force, I went into the airlines. See a theme? See a theme here? Yeah, yeah. no, right. This is I was in the airlines for about six, seven more years. Were you flying? Not really. I worked on board. I worked at tickets. I worked special... Yeah. representative for multiple airlines. And uh, it was always air, 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 uh-huh. air force, airlines that I wanted to real estate. Okay. And uh, I guess I wanted to make some money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was going to say. I'm the other thing to... makes no money. <laughs> Need money to get that film started. And then I retired from that. And here I am. And here you are. This is kind of a big question. And you can... Pull it over. As you get older, and uh, everybody kind of starts conquering. Death is the natural answer for all of us. What's your thoughts on an afterlife? And do you think that like, you come back into this other universe? Or what's your thoughts on that? To be honest, I really have no thoughts about that. Yeah. Where okay. we go, I don't know. Do we go somewhere? Possibly. You know, so I really... Sorry, I don't have a... That's okay. That's just a question that kind of came about. And abductions, have you had any experiences lately? Not conscious. Not conscious. Right. It's all telepathic and we're all kind of, not all, but lots of us are kind of turned off. Yeah. So to speak. Oh, we got a little Timothy Leary turn on thing. (laughs) Turn on, tune in, turn on and tune out. Was that it? Right, right, (laughs) right. So we're back here. We're going to just, we're kind of jumping back and forth. UFOs. What would a UFO, they don't have to eat, right? So Gerardo is our resident chef and we always have a little segment of what's for lunch. So what's your food style? What do you love in Sonoma? What well, feeds the uh, enlightened? Kind of everything. I like Asian food a lot. Oh, yeah. I lived in Bangkok for one year. Okay. In the Air Force and uh, loved it. And we've got Bangkok 9 here. Is that the favorite? Well, it's, it's very, very good. Where is Bangkok 9? Is it the one by it's near Whole Foods? Foods? Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. It is very good. It's very fresh tasting. Yeah. Like what about that. the one in Highway 12? You know, I, th- I thought she, that they were relatives. Well, interestingly enough, Bangkok 9 originally was owned by a woman named Sunny. Yeah. Her sister, Ma'am, owns the one on Highway 12. That's right. Sunny I sold and Sai who's the owner now, bought it from her. Okay. But Sai's so doing a anymore. great, great job. So Isan, I do like that. I like fresh rolls. Right. And I like their pineapple curry. But it's she's sweetness. open, she's not open. Hey, you know, I mean, that's just business. These It's not just these days, you know, it's, it's everywhere. Bangkok 9 is open all the time. Mm. What about other Asian food? Japanese? I like Japanese and I work for Japan Airlines. 
<laughs> oh, he did. See the theme here? Okay. Japan Airlines in Bangkok. <laughs> yeah. Got to go to probably a lot of exciting places, right? I did. If you work when for you the work airlines. for the airlines, in the old days, you can travel for free. Yeah. Anywhere. But you can only do it in the off season. So oh, I was really? in Paris in December. <laughs> okay. Rainy. <laughs> right? Yeah, right? Exactly. Right. I have a friend who is an, a flight attendant, and I know, and my sister-in-law gets her buddy pass every year. So for 4th of July, I think they're going to Tahiti for four days. Tahiti. I know. How exciting is that? It seems like if you're a seasoned traveler, you kind of get the, she's like, oh, business class is where it's at. But it's exciting to go all these places. Do you have a, any outstanding favorite places that you have traveled to? Well, you know, though I lived in Bangkok for a year, it was a great experience. And for a tourist, my wife has been as a tourist with a group that she belongs to. And um, she loved it. And also they have this upcountry. They have this adopted elephants. It's an elephant farm. Oh, really? With real elephants. Okay. Lots of them. And they, It's like an elephant rescue? or is it Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Sorry. You're right. It's elephant rescue. Amazing. And it's upcountry. I love that. Elephants are friendly until... <laughs> right. Oh, no. So Harada has this question. Are you busting back out the elephant question? Yeah, yeah. It kind of comes and goes in and out of podcasts for our guest. Everybody has a particular answer. Harada. Okay. Somebody gives you an elephant, but you can't give it away. You can't sell it. You have to keep it. What will you do with it? Well, I can tell you from personal experience, my next door neighbor, when I lived a little north of Bangkok, had an elephant. So it was a pet. It's like a dog. I mean, it was an elephant. And I have pictures of me riding it. Yes. I remember it was very uncomfortable. By the way, it's bad for the elephant for us to be on the back of an elephant. Is that right? Unhealthy Is it, it, for the elephant. I imagine. But, it, but I remember it was you know, kind of bony and, uh. you know, it's anyway. But the elephant was sweet. This is a huge elephant. So you're saying you'd be a pet. Do you know what? Right. Right next door neighbor had a pet. You'll ride it in Sonoma then. You'll be riding that well, elephant. Yeah, it was north of Bangkok. <laughs> so I said, uh, when they asked me that question, I said, I'll eat it. Really? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> He's yeah. disdain here. I love Terrible. your answer. Everybody has a little different answer, but I like having it as a pet. Yeah. Only if they stay small, though, you know? Yeah. yeah, this one was not small. This one was large. I imagine you really go through food feeding them as well. Oh, yeah. he, you just feed them did. peanuts. And they yeah, what, really? do, what do they like? They got uh, greens, hay. Green, yeah. Just all kinds uh, of... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I wasn't When they fed them, I wasn't around. Okay. They're vegetarian. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but yeah, right? Right. They are. Right. Sweet. I They're love nice it. and tasty, then. Oh, all right. <laughs> this guy, this guy. What about alien food? Aliens don't eat? They absorb through their skin. Oh. So they don't, I don't think they have a similar digestive system. Okay. Absorbing, huh? Yeah. That would be interesting. I don't know how like they just regular exactly do that. Food or is our food really their food? I wonder what their food no, is. No, but we should know because we've had some as guests down like in Los Alamos that there was a... One of the extraterrestrials from Roswell okay. survived. They called him EB1, Extraterrestrial Biological Entity 1. Is that the one with the, like the photos of the alien laying down? Anyway, maybe I'm well, getting confused. On that was stories. one of the, maybe the, the species. Okay. But uh, I've got video of E.T. really taken in 1965. In probably White Sands or Los Alamos. I mean, an actual film. Okay. Clip. What? Have you busted that out before for it's many been of out your there. lectures? I got it off of YouTube oh, okay. originally, right. but it was probably related to Project Serpo. Okay. So you have this Walking Among Us coming up on October 25th, folks. This is what I find. I'm working on a project and I get excited about another project. So, where's your thoughts on this? Are you going to do another lecture in 2024? Are you working on something in the next well, theme? I'm working on it yet. It just comes to me about six months in advance. Oh, yeah? I'm a generalist ufologist. Okay. But I pick on certain things that are important. Like, for instance, 
why did it take me 40 years to figure out film is where it's at? Yeah. Media is where it's at for education. Well, the walking among us is very important. Now everyone knows a little about UFOs. Right. Because what you a, can stream any film and you can find it prevalent And the government before. came out sort of and said, yeah, they're kind of here and they know a lot more that we'll never know. But I'm very concerned about them walking among us. What What's do they want? the concern part? Yeah. The concern part, what are their goals? I'm very concerned about what are their goals. I think I have those concerns about our own government. So, <laughs> and people in general, what are the goals here? And the thing about the goals is it's in one word. Well, two words, the change. I keep hearing about the change. So the question is, what does that really mean? I think it means that down the line, 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, 100 years from now, something's going to happen where maybe we're not in control anymore. Maybe. I don't know. I know. I, I always wonder I mean, about are that we too. in control now? I mean, I, <laughs> well, we're here on this planet. What's the alternatives here? Maybe, maybe they are among us. Right. Maybe you're lucky if you get chosen by the aliens because that's a continued heritage of whatever. I don't even know. That's a good question. Yeah. I want to know what their intentions are. And I may never get that answer until it's too late. I may not be around anyway. So, I wonder what alien lifespan is like. I know. Supposedly, the E bands from Millions. Serpo, no, three to 400 years. Oh, that's not much more than I don't us. Mind. I mean, you know, I don't mind. I just think they were 200 external. Well, or eternally, or eternal. not eternal. Yeah. <laughs> I thought they just kept on going, but that wouldn't make sense because you're always trying to breed right. and recreate. So, that would be an interest to be down here because why else would you? want to be here yeah exactly. right except for curiosity yes okay maybe they're just curious like you do you think there's a ufo gym on the alien side <laughs> telepathically doing lectures wherever they're at about this human race you know what that's a good question <laughs> do you think they're even interested? i don't know <laughs> yeah. i would think that they're beyond this yeah mm-hmm. they're just curious like we are with like kids and bugs and that kind yeah, of stuff right. you know do you believe in multiple universes? Sure. Where we're in another universe, where another, per, you know, where something Different else. universe, multiple dimensions. Yeah. It goes on and on and on and on. It's just unbelievable what's out there. And I know 5% at most. Yeah. I think my son's showed me a picture of uh, our universe and then show me the picture of where our universe is. It is just like a little dot in right. Do you think, in space. Yeah. I'm, now I'm intersecting in like, okay, meditation, transcendental meditation. Yes. That's how I feel like an experience might be for time travel or alien travel or something like that, that that would be the ride. Do you think that maybe. intersects it all? You know, like maybe that's a close experience. That's how I imagine it when you get sometimes there in the meditative state. I mean, they have yogis that do this for days on end, that that's where it does. You transcend the body and maybe you're in a parallel universe. Huh. I do not know. I always believe when we're dreaming and we're dreaming somewhere else, I believe that's in like in another universe. Though, that's you possible. Know? Yeah, I agree. Well, Jim, I think we're going to wrap it up here pretty soon. We're, we could talk forever. We could talk all afternoon. But everybody, UFO Jim here, and you 25th, if you didn't catch it already, of October, Andrews Hall. And by the time this is coming out, tickets will be available through the community center. You can go on SonomaCommunityCenter.org. And we always love having you here. Thank you. And all the proceeds go to the community all center. All the proceeds go to the community so center. when are we going to get the gray guy? We always get oh, the yeah. real gray. He has a, well, it's have, really a statue. His is. name is Al. It's a mannequin. It's a mannequin. And he comes down and he hangs out in the office for a good month. And it's awesome because you can't really see him, but you're walking down the hall and all you see is Al's head, right? His praying mantis head. He's a welcome wagon. He's a gray. Yeah, he's a gray, huh? Right. Yeah. He's a short one, smart one. The right. working bee. Exactly. So everybody, get your tickets. Come out. Hear Jim speak. 
And go check out The Phenomenon, which you can find on YouTube. Yeah, anywhere. Anywhere. I was looking at The Phenomenon. It shows me a lot of, a lot of them, though. There's one for Jamie Foxx, I think. That's it, James Foxx. James Foxx? He's a that filmmaker. One? All right, perfect. And okay. there's that one, yeah. Uh, you can and find it in Jamie Foxx, the yeah, actor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not that Jamie <laughs> Foxx. Okay. Yeah, James I, think Fox. I, I think I saw that it's free in the Pluto platform. It's free. Pluto. Many- Pluto. I think I got that. Yeah. Pluto. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you could just make it easy and... The phenomenon. So once I figured out the search, and thank God for 13-year-olds, right? I'm all doot, 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 trying to plug in. She's all, Mom, just talk into it. I'm all, oh, the phenomenon. phenomenon. Life changer. Right, <laughs> I'm going to watch it tonight. All right. Thanks for coming on board, You're Jim. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Go Community Center. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for supporting Community Center. Come down here for everything. Yes. And Remember to subscribe, huh? Yeah, please subscribe. Because the then we know you're listening here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? And we want to bring more people on like Jim that support our community and have great stories. Yep. Okay? All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.